Hello, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to the live stream. Today is all about how to start. How do you get started as a UI designer? How do you get your foot in the door and begin in the industry if you have no experience? Because that's how everybody starts. That's how I started. Maybe that's how you're starting right now. Maybe you are a couple of steps down the line. You've already gotten that foot in the door, but you got to admit, you started with no experience. Hey, let me know in the chat where you currently are in your journey. Are you just starting out? Have you not even started, but you're real interested? Are you a veteran of the industry and you're just kind of interested in what's going to be talked about today? Let me know in the chat. I'm real excited to have all you guys here. We have, uh, we are streaming today on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, and I believe Facebook. So we're all over the place trying to make this as helpful as possible for as many people as possible, because that's my goal to get as many people as possible into the industry. Hey, what might help me do that is if you could really quickly, if you're on YouTube, just like, follow, subscribe. If you're on any of the other platforms, do the equivalent, right? So you just make the algorithms pick this up. That'd be super helpful to me and to everybody else. We've got people in the chat right now saying, in an intermediate place, just made my first design ever in Figma. All right, Ma Amor, you are doing it. Uh, let's see, uh, Techno, I can't pronounce the rest of that, says, I work on a dev team assuming user experience duties. Gradually over the last eight months, good for you. I'm currently, uh, Tarbu Art says, I'm currently a content strategist at a major corporation. I make sick figures, but I really love design. I get it, I get it, man. There's so many reasons that you might wanna make the switch start it out right now, and that is what we are talking about today. And so, uh, just really quickly, here's my story. I started out 16 years ago. I was washing dishes and waiting tables, and I was playing a lot of music at the time. And I just desperately wanted to do something that was creative, that I could enjoy, that I didn't have to show up every day and feel like I was clocking and clocking out and punching in numbers because that's just not me. I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to solve problems. And I was introduced to the industry of design. And I spent years teaching myself how to do design, eventually finding some mentors and some people to help me. Uh, and then eventually finally going to school. Didn't really love that experience. Realized I was doing better learning on my own. And I spent a lot of time spinning my wheels, learning how to get into the industry. And I wish that I had a live stream like this where somebody could fast forward my progress and really help guide my trajectory to get me started. Here's my, here's my, my promise to you that if you did everything that I'm about to mention, I got five big steps for you to take. If you do all of these five steps over the next eight to 10 months, you will make drastic progress, like 10X the amount of progress that I could have made in 10 months. You will make it in the next eight to 10 months if you will commit to the process I'm about to show you right now. You could very much potentially be in a place Potentially, I'm not going to make like, per, like you will do this. No, I'm saying if you commit to it, everyone will be at different levels of readiness depending on who you are, but you will be a, far above and beyond where you would have been had you not committed to this process. Okay. I believe in it. I believe in the things that I'm about to share with you because I want you to get that first job. I want you to go on that first interview. I want you to get that first salary doing the thing that you love as a creative. So throughout this stream, if you have questions, feel free to ask those. I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. Probably won't be able to get to all of them because I only got about 35 or 40 minutes with everyone today before we get back to the rest of our responsibilities for the day. Let's jump in and start talking about out of the five, what's the very first thing you need to do if you are getting started in the industry? Well, Obviously, you need to learn the basics of design, all right? You need to learn the absolute basics of design. Design is not art where you need to learn how to paint and, and you get all the time in the world to do it. Design is a system and a process that has rules and guidelines, and you need to learn those basic rules and guidelines. I think a really good book that I recommend to everybody is The Non-Designer's design book. This is going to be a book that will help you to, I mean, you can get it for like nine bucks on Amazon. It's worth the investment in my opinion. And it's going to be the thing that allows you to learn typography and scale and rhythm and proximity and color and font pairing and all of those tools of the trade, so to speak, that will actually apply to any form of design. So if you want to be a graphic designer, 
You want to be a print designer. You want to be a web designer, UI designer, whatever it is, you do need to learn some of those basic foundational principles. And if you don't want to go to design school, if you don't want to go to university, you can learn that actually from a $9 book on Amazon. You can learn some of those. But what you're going to hear a lot today as, as we discuss these things is that it doesn't actually, I don't actually think it matters at all where you went to school, if you went to school. What matters is do you know how to apply the things that you have learned? So the people that excel in the design industry are not people who have a certificate of completion from a school. They are the people who say, I just learned this thing. How do I put it into application? How do I execute upon it? I'm going to start making, creating, using what I know. Okay. So that's the first thing I would recommend is reading that book or a similar book to teach you foundational principles. Number two, I think, especially now, again, we're talking about going down the pathway of becoming a UI designer. You can watch, there are so many YouTube videos, not just my YouTube channel, but a lot of other really talented, amazing UI designers on YouTube right now. And they could help you also if you just watch, copy, duplicate, soak it all in. But again, the primary thing you need to do is to not just watch it and go, hmm, I'm so much smarter now because I've watched that video. No, you watch it, you intake the information and you do what? You immediately apply the information. You immediately start executing upon that information. So if you watch a video about where I'm designing like a mobile app, if you don't watch that video, design along with me or, or open up your, your open up Figma or XD or Sketch or whatever you're going to do afterwards and try it again and try it again until you feel like it looks better, then you're not going to make the progress that we're talking about. You're not going to get to that place where you're ready to enter the industry. You're just not. Because what it takes is a determination. We're going to talk more about that later. But you can watch lots of YouTube videos. There's so much free education there. Do it. And then another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could look into a free or a cheap course. There's courses on Udemy. There's courses on, you know, like all over the place that you could. I, I My good friend, Rand Seagal over at Flux, he has a bunch of really great courses that are like basics of design, like web flow, like freelancing courses. But if you want something that's specific to UI design, hey, a little bit of a, a, a plug here. I'm going to go ahead and say that if you want something like that, you might want to consider maybe doing something like uh, like joining my design champions, um, my design champions club, because there are monthly events, sometimes even weekly events. Um, I, I put into my design champions, all of my design resources, you can show and tell and get visual feedback. But also if you're interested, I can head over to my website, click on courses. I just launched my brand new course called the introduction to UI and UX design. And right now it's on sale for 50% off, right? It's going to cover all the things that you probably want to learn when it comes to UI design, right? So get a free course, get a cheap course, but here is like, uh, here is what you would get inside of this course. You would get like an introduction to what is UI UX design, project requirements, UX research. You'd get some wireframing basics, prototyping. You're going to build out a capstone project. You're going to get prototyping skills, Figma skills, color, typography, type, scales, like grids, all that kind of stuff, as well as some career prep. So if that's something you need, you can get it right now for the cost of like three expensive fancy lattes. And you have a course that will help you learn some of those specifics. Okay. So Again, uh, it doesn't matter where you get it. Actually, in tip for me, all I care about is that you get it, is that you go out and you find a place and these resources that will help you learn and grow. Okay. Um, Nikki is in the, in the chat right now saying senior content designer in tech, but I need to learn more about wireframing in Figma. That's good. Here's what's amazing. I love that. I love that Nikki, because what you're saying is I'm not a beginner. I'm in the industry. I'm actually, I'm actually more on the senior side of things. But my continued education actually matters to me. And that is also a great trademark of a true UI designer, of a true designer in the industry, is that constant education, making sure that you're staying on the forefront of what's in your industry and how you can perform and execute on the skills that you have acquired throughout your career, but continue to execute in the best, most efficient, productive way that you possibly can. Good for you. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. And Drico is on the other hand saying, starting with design just now, like just starting, good for you as well. It, it doesn't matter where you're currently at, just make sure you're making those efforts. Let's talk about the big second thing 
that you need to do, all right? And you need to study, because if you're gonna be a UI designer, it's not graphic design, it's not poster design, it's not branding design, it's this medium in which we are designing for is what? It's the screen. We are digital product designers, web designers, web application designers, right? So you need to study UI patterns and UI specifics. You need to really quickly start inundating yourself and just immersing yourself with the language and the knowledge of UI design specific patterns, techniques, and methods. Like if I say to you, bottom tab bar navigation, you should know what that is. If I say an eight pixel grid, you should know what that is. If I say primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary call to actions, you should know what those are, right? You should know what these things are like hamburgers, slide outs, drop downs, cards, you know, uh, uh, drawers. You need to know the patterns, the tools of the trade. This, like if I was a poster designer, okay? If that's what I, where I made my, my like living was designing posters, right? I would need to know about a lot of things for that medium. I'd need to know about paper and card stocks and printers and vendors and inks. I would need to know, have typographies and typography foundries that I like to do. I'd need to know like vector illustration. There's tools in my toolbox that I'd have to be able to get into and pull tools out to make my posters. This is the same thing for UI design. You need to know UI design specifics, right? So you can reach into that toolbox and pull them out and go, oh, bottom tab bar navigation, slide up card like horizontal row, like you need to know what those things are. I would encourage you to study these few things like, or do these few things. Number one, study the Apple human interface guidelines. Okay. The, the HIG is what we call that. The Apple human interface guidelines. This is the basically the system, the structure that Apple has laid out from years of designing products to say, this is what works and this is what doesn't. This is how big a tappable button or area should be. And this is when it's too small. So read through and just saturate yourself with the human interface guidelines. Next, I would say, do the same thing. Read the Google material design system, read through all of that, because these are the big two mobile operating systems. You're going to learn a lot about usability, user interface design. If you just spend some nights and weekends reading through the HIG and reading through the Google material design stuff, you are going to learn so much. But again, you can't just read it. What do you need to do? You need to apply it. You need to constantly be saying, oh, tappable areas are this much. I'm going to go through my latest design and make sure my tappable areas are right. And then what does that need to, what do I, I need to now change and shift to make that work? So we learn, we evolve, we grow. Those are two great things you could work on. Here's the third one I would recommend download some free pattern libraries and design systems. You can do this inside of Figma. Jump into Figma, go into the community, look up pattern library, design system, like whatever it is, find those things, pull them apart into pieces and try to put them back together. It's okay. You won't ruin the original thing because when you duplicate it into your Figma workspace, it's going to be a duplicate. If you break it and you go, oh no, it's all ugly now, throw it away grab a fresh copy, try it again, pull it apart, figure out how it was made, uh, reassemble it, and then you will have this great advanced mature knowledge. Again, if you did this, if you committed to this process in eight to 10 months, you are going to have a drastic, drastically more amount of skills and be very much more ready, very much more, a lot more ready to enter into the industry. Okay. We're going to stop right there because we've touched on a lot of things already. I'm going to do some question and answer here. And I want to hear what you guys have to say. All right. We might be having some technical difficulties. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure at all, but we do have some questions in or comments and questions inside of the chat. Let's see. Uh, Viraj says your Elden Ring app tutorial helped me a lot with Figma. Can you give some tips to better, to be better at communication? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, just communication in general. Um, I think that uh, there's a couple of key tips as, as an educator, as a teacher, as like an online mentor. Some of the things that I think are really important about communication is to simplify um, and try to be as succinct as possible, right? What that really requires us is to think things through first, think them through in the back of our heads before they come out of the front of our face, right? So we want to think things through so they are succinct and short and clear. The more clear, the more clarity you have on anything that you're saying, the better it's received, the less wiggle room there is for people to 
misunderstand it or take it in some sort of place, right? So I would say that's actually the biggest one. I'll just leave it at that is clarity and succinct communication, okay? Uh, Andrico says, how will I become an expert in UI design? Oh, 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 Andrico, that's a great question. We'll get to that later on, I promise. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, Phil says, what are your thoughts on Webflow? Have you used it much? Here's my thoughts on Webflow. Webflow is the bomb. Webflow, in my opinion, I'm just gonna throw my fanboy like opinion out ready. Webflow is the goat in my, the greatest of all time, as far as web builders go. Because um, for all of you that are still building WordPress websites, why? I just, and this is going to be hot take opinion. It's going to be, woo! It's going to be a hot take. I'm just saying, why would you still be using WordPress to build sites? And don't say content management because Webflow has that. Don't say because you can build it your way with a builder. Webflow is that and it's much simpler. It reflects good code. It's clean semantic code. You can do everything. You can create collections, content management, e-commerce, scale it. It's great for responsive mobile stuff. You can now do... Uh, logic and conditions. You can create back end like customer only, like login spaces, like private member communities. You can do everything, right? Okay, so yes, I'm a big fan of Webflow. And that is all the questions we will answer for now. All right, those were fantastic questions. <laughs> uh, Tricia, one of my design champions. She's taking my course right now, actually. Tricia says, will you make a Webflow course in design champs? Ooh. I might, I'm actually, I'm really excited because I'm starting to ramp up the amount of like Webflow usage. I use it for my clients. I use it for my personal projects. Um, and I'm, for some reason, I just haven't spent a lot of time. Uh, I spent a lot more time over the last few years doing a lot more mobile application design, no code development for mobile applications, but I still use Webflow constantly. And it just like a light went on the other day. Like, why am I not talking about Webflow more? Cause I love it so much. So we're going to start doing a lot more Webflow stuff. I promise you that. Absolutely. But Tricia gets to ask that question because she's one of my design champions. Hey, if you want to ask more questions like this uh, and have more hands on with me like Tricia, then consider becoming a design champion. We actually have our next live event that's coming up. Uh, May 16th is our next design crit. That is our design feedback design uh, uh, time where we bring our design together and we present it. We have room in each design crit for three presenters. Um, we walk through their, their work, could be a portfolio piece, a case study, something they're building live right now. And we give feedback and that will 10 X your growth as a creative as well. We're not mentioning feedback today, but just know you get feedback. Woo. It's going to ramp up your skills and your preparation. Um, to become a UI or a UX designer. So uh, if you're interested, man, consider it. Okay, let's jump back in to our third point, which is create three, that's right, three capstone projects. That's what you should be shooting for. People ask all the time, when do I know if I'm hireable? When is it time to apply for jobs? Okay, well, let's go back through what we've learned so far, right? You're gonna learn the basics of design, I'm not saying you need to know everything and be able to recite it perfectly, but you feel like you have a good handle on the basics from uh, the basics of design. You've taken some free cheap courses. Maybe you've taken my course. Maybe you've become a, a design champion, one of my members, and you're learning a lot, man. You are growing. Well, next you, and you took that knowledge. You started studying design specifics, UI design specifics, the Apple HIG, Google Material Design, Pattern Libraries, Design Systems, and started tearing those apart. And then you took all that knowledge and you are hyper-focusing now on creating three capstone projects. Here's the three that you need to create. A mobile app, a web app, and a website. You need a mobile app, a website, and you need a web application. This means take your favorite, and I recommend all of these to be redesigns, and find a, an app that maybe you enjoy, could be a web app, mobile app, or website, that you enjoy, but it's awful. There's there's at least one, you have to find a website and or an app that has at least one bad thing about it, okay? One thing that you disagree with from your study of design basics and UI design specifics, and maybe a little bit of user experience side research, right? You found, man, this this website is just looks atrocious, it's just distracting. Or man, this web application, their call to actions are not clear. Or this web application over here, this layout is not helpful and beneficial to my needs as a user. You need to find something that has some of those visual and experiential problems. Those are the case studies you redesign. Those are your concept projects. People ask me this question all the time. How can I get hired if I don't have any real work in my in my portfolio? Ah, 
You don't need real work. What you need to show is progress and value. Everything we're going to talk about for the rest of this presentation is value driven. You need to provide value and showcase value. How can you do that? If you don't have clients, take an existing application and show how you could have, you would be able to increase its value. And we're going to talk about how you would do that later, but you need to do these three redesigns and those are your capstone projects. Okay. Those are your capstone projects. Now for each one of these, I would encourage you go start a free chat GPT account. And after you've done each one of these designs, then ask chat GP to help you write some value driven case study language and post those things up on Behance and Dribble. Boom. That is your portfolio. You don't need some fancy schmancy thing, custom coded thing. You might love Webflow. Fine. If you want to build it, I don't care. But at the very least, the bare bones thing you could do is get these three case studies ready, launch all of that work and all of those visuals up onto Behance and Dribble, and then use ChatGP to help you write language because so many of us are bad at writing. Just have it help you edit it, tailor it to the way that you need it to speak about value. Now, where do we find this value? That's going to be the question that so many of you have, because you're going to say, what is value? Where do I find this value? We, we need to create that value driven portfolio. Value lies in these two things, quantitative value and qualitative value. I repeat that quantitative and qualitative value. Now, if you take my intro to UI and UX design course, you'll learn this in the UX portion where we talk about some basics of user research. What is qualitative research? What is quantitative research? Qualitative research is anything, or excuse me, quantitative research is anything that is numbers based, metric based. This means clicks, leads, traffic, revenue, this is the, and if you really want to learn more about this, this is what changed the game for me on this. I did an interview with Jonathan Courtney, the owner, of, owner and founder of AJ and Smart, super talented, super smart dude. And he taught me in that moment, it is not about, as a designer, no one cares about your colors, your typography choice, or your personal process. No one cares. That's a hard truth to face because you've done all this work to create this process and learn all these skills. Nobody cares about it though. You know what they care about? They care that all of those things that you've learned, those skills actually bring them value. The CEO of a company could care less if a button is blue or flaming pink or bright, ridiculous pink. Does it get the user to click it more? Does it get that CEO more sales? Is it driving revenue to his company? Is it giving him more traffic, more leads, more eyeballs? What value is it bringing to the client, customer, or company? That's the question, right? And so quantitative value or quantitative research would try to figure out what are these numbers, these leads, this traffic, this money, this revenue, these sales, What what is it, right? And in your portfolio, you need to provide proof that you can offer that type of value. And you're going, how? I don't have any sort of Google metrics to redesign this thing. And that's a toughie and I get it. That's why I said do concept projects, redesign projects, because the one that we're going to lean on, the one that you're going to lean on at first is you're going to lean on the qualitative, right? The quality of the experience. You're going to lean on qualitative research and qualitative value, okay? Blake says, my pen is running out of ink. Slow down, Jesse. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm so excited. Do you know why I'm so excited? Because I love my career. <laughs> I, I like what I do. And I think that so many of you would also love what you do, right? And I want you in. There's no reason. There's this stupid barrier to entry. My goal, my, my goal in this life as a creative, as a teacher, is to rip that barrier to entry down and get you stinking in, right? But to do that, you need to do these things. I can't, I can't bring you in and you know nothing and are able to do nothing. I need you to put your head down, buckle down and get it done for the next eight to 10 months so you can join me in this career path that you love so much. That's why I'm talking so fast. That's why I'm so excited. Okay, so you need to lean on this qualitative value. Okay, what's qualitative? Qualitative is not numbers, leads, traffic, sales, revenue, percentages. Qualitative is how does it feel? How did the customer enjoy it? What do they say when they use it? Is it better? Just does it feel better? What's the quality of their experience? So here's what you do. Here's the plan. Here's your game plan. You're going to make these three case studies, these three capstone projects, and then you're going to build a value-driven portfolio using highlighting this qualitative 
value. And that qualitative value is going to look like after you have redesigned these applications, you're going to, and we talk about this in my new course, right? There's a whole section on how to do like really quick and easy, fast guerrilla tactic user research and, and getting some feedback from users. What you need to do is you need, they then need to take those redesigns. You need to put them in front of people. It could even be my design champs crew. Come be part of the crew. And all you need to do is, is give us the first version and your version and say, I'm trying to see if the experience is better. And all you're trying to do is get some qualitative feedback from people. And if you can get 65 or 70% of people to say your version, your experience is much better than the previous because you finally made that button very, very visible to me. And so I enjoyed that. That is a simple ground level qualitative value driven metric that says 65% of users enjoyed ours more right? Or you can do this. You can measure the amount of clicks, that, clicks or taps it took to get the user to the goal, right? If you're trying to do a checkout experience, redesign that checkout experience, make it simple. And you'd be able to say 75% of users, if you get this feedback, honestly, ethically, 75% of our users gave us feedback that said they were able to find the checkout button quicker, faster, and therefore enjoy their experience more. And so you are now all of a sudden, and, and again, when you build these awesome capstone projects, you use ChatGP to enter in some text for you. You got these banging mixtures of, you know, hero image and gorgeous framed stuff, and maybe even a Figma prototype embedded, the whole thing just is beautiful. That's what I want to see for you, right? But at the very top, value. Tell me, I want to see immediately 75% of users enjoyed this experience better. 80% of users found the button quicker. I want to see all that value. And then in each spot where you talk about a portion of the application, I want to see that value brought up again. Again, boom, here was the, you know, checkout experience flow. And I redesigned that in this mobile application. And here's value again. 75% of our users were able to get to checkout quicker. If I'm a hiring manager and I see value driven portfolios, holy cow, you will rise above the white noise when it comes time for hiring. And so we need to create value driven portfolios. If you can find quantitative stuff, good on you. But if you can't lean on the qualitative, use your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, or my design champions community to get that feedback and insert it into those portfolios. Let's talk about the next one, right? The last one of the day, and this is the hardest one, you guys. This is the hardest one that everybody starts to fall. This is what James Clear says. Right, let me just talk about it. It's the, the, the fifth point here is to be consistent. I wanna see you put your head down for the next eight months and do these things religiously. I want, I want you to make this your habit. I want you to make this your pursuit. And if you do that and you are consistent about it, then you will overcome what James Clear calls in his famous book, Atomic Habits, the plateau of latent potential. The plateau of latent potential is this. It's you went to the gym for two months and didn't see the results, so you stopped going to the gym. But if you would have stayed the course for four more months, Months, you'd start seeing like massive results, weight loss, muscle increase, energy, like health. You'd start seeing it, but so many people drop off too soon. And so if you would stay consistent and get through that plateau of latent potential, right? Stop worrying about trends. You're on a trajectory right now, right now. And I just saw somebody in the thing go like, is it Webflow or is it, is it Dora or is it, is it Wix? Or I heard about Framer. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Okay. You need to learn the skills to build a value-driven portfolio. And this is my second point, sub point of this. You don't need to learn more than you currently need. Do you need to learn Dora or Webflow or Wix or Framer? Do you need to be a Squarespace developer right now? Then don't learn it. Ask yourself this, what am I, where am I trying to go? If I'm trying to get to be a UI designer and get my first job in the industry, is that gonna help me or distract me? Here's another great book recommendation for you. I recently got done for the third time probably reading The One Thing by Gary Keller. And The One Thing is this idea of hyper-focusing. Don't do a lot of things really wide and really shallow. Do one thing really deep and really powerfully, right? And the more that you focus each and every day on that one thing, you dedicate more of your time to that one thing, the further and faster you will get to the goal that you had in mind. And so show up every day, be consistent. Don't try to learn other things or go down goat trails and paths. Focus on what you need to do. What do you need to do? Let's start again. You need to learn some of the, the basics of design. You need to learn UI patterns and UI specifics. You need to start creating those capstone projects. Use 
using those foundationals and those specifics. And then you need to take those capstone projects and insert them into value-driven portfolio, into a value-driven portfolio using quantitative and qualitative value points as much as you can. And you need to do that consistently for the next eight months. And if you do that consistently for the next eight months, you might sprint through a cycle where you do this in three months, start over and do it again and it will get better. And if you do that in another two months, start over and do it again, go again, do it until your work starts to get so mature. It starts to get so good because the truth is you can read all the books you want, take all the courses you want, but unless you show up every day and do it again, you will not grow and you will not reach that goal. I want you to reach that goal. That's the whole purpose of this stream today is for you to reach that goal and stop having that little thing on LinkedIn that says looking for work. I don't want you to be looking for work. I want you to have found work. Okay. And to do that, you got to put in the work. Okay. So you're going to get out of it, what you put into it. And that is my final advice for the day. We have people asking questions in the chat. We got time for a couple more while I take a sip of my coffee. All right, we got a few people jumping in. <laughs> Patrick Eustace says, preach it. All right, uh, somebody said, Confucius says the 10,000 hour rule, right? That's the old 10,000 hours of mastery. Maybe, maybe it's 10,000 hours. I, 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 I could say maybe I believe in the 10,000 hours, but I know a lot of people who have quote unquote, I don't need you to reach mastery to get into the industry. I don't need you to reach mastery, right? Because the truth is, Mr. Miyagi said to Daniel's son in, in the Karate Kid part one, if, if you know karate, there's always somebody out there that knows more karate. So there's always more of a master than you when it comes to any specific skill. I don't need you to be a master. I need you to get going. I need you to have momentum. I just need you to lift off the ground and start getting some of that velocity. That's all I need, right? And I wanna see that done consistently. It is impressive when you actually sound Matt C says this process sounds tiring. Yes. Yes. Anything worth doing is hard. Anything that's going to be good for you, like eating healthy, working out or carving out a career path for yourself. You will end up loving years from now and no longer going to work every day and saying, Oh, I hate work. I can't wait for Friday. Um, I love Monday through Friday because I love my career. I love what I do. And now I've shifted that career more and more into helping you. And I love it even more. And so the, I, I get it. I'm not trying to paint the fairy tale fantasy to a five-year-old that says, do what you love and follow your dream. And I'm, I'm saying you could have something in life that you love and enjoy a little bit more than maybe the thing you don't currently love Monday through Friday. You spend so much of your life, the majority of your life at work, wouldn't you like to just enjoy it a little bit more than you currently are? And I'm saying for me, this is the industry that's helped me do that. I enjoy it and I want you to enjoy it as well. Okay. And so, um, that's answer that question. That's what I got. Kival asked this question. Do these values, quantitative and qualitative values go for other design who start uh, being graphic designers? Absolutely. Right. Let's value is what this industry is all about because we're not artists. We are designers. We are problem solvers. We are critical thinkers. Doesn't matter what form of design you're in, whether it be industrial design, packaging design, nobody pays somebody to create the artwork or the design for a package. It's purely because it's pretty. It has to sell, right? It's selling a product, right? And so everything we do in design is about driving value to a brand person or company. Okay. So you need to understand that even if you were a poster designer, that poster has to be able to communicate its purpose so that more people show up to the opera that night, right? If it's unclear when it's going to happen, where the address is, people give up quickly. You know, the quite a common thing around where I live is I'll see uh, uh, signs on the side of the road that say, I buy houses. And then there's, that's it. There's that, that the term I buy houses is this big and underneath it, there's a phone number. It is I'm driving by 60 miles an hour. Not that I want somebody to buy my house anyways, but I'm driving by going, I couldn't see the call to action. I couldn't see the, the follow-up information of the phone number if I tried. Right. And so there's, if you are a poster designer, value matters. What kind of value are you bringing? Are you driving more people to make that call and increase leads and traffic? It is the same mental model across the board. And if you don't get on board with that mental model, you're going to miss the entire purpose of what you do as a creative because it's about what value you bring. Not what school you went to, not what program you use, right? Not what skill set is on your CV or your resume. 
no one cares. They care if you can bring value, all right? So be bringing value each and every day, and that should be your pursuit. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining. Hey, if you are on YouTube, maybe you're on the, any of the other platforms, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell. And again, consider becoming one of my design champions, right? My design champions get access to ask me all sorts of questions like Q&A channels, show and tell channels. We have an entire champion chat. The whole thing's run on circle. It's super duper dope. It's a community. We're having fun and hanging out and we have live events like this one, but even better. We got our design crit coming up on May 16th. We have a no code tools that every designer needs coming up later on a couple days later in May. And we always have office hours where I'm there for an hour each and every month to answer any question you have to role play a client issue you, do job interview prep, any of that kind of stuff with you. What do we got in June? Interview prep as our special, as our key event for the month, as well as that design crit and office hours. And of course, you always have access to design resources and all sorts of amazing posts that are exclusive only to my design members. Also, if you just want to learn more about UI and UX design, consider signing up for my new intro to UI and UX design course. Here it is all like just decked out with tons of value and information. Consider that as well. I hope, I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope this week has been rad for you. I hope that you are pursuing your goals. I hope you are showing up consistently for them. And I hope to see you again in another one of these live streams. So until next time, friends, talk to you soon.